What's going on, everybody? This is live stream 47, and the topic of the hour is going to be the ATF and their new stabilizing brace rule, okay? And uh, obviously, uh, pretty contentious stuff to talk about regarding this, and uh, I've got my usual suspects on tonight, so I'm going to go around the horn and introduce everybody. So first and foremost, we got Les with Pegasus Test, No Strangers live stream. He's a um, U.S. Marine veteran. Uh, veteran of the Gulf War. He has his own logistics company as well as tactical training company called Polaris Tactics and Simulations Division. Be sure to check out his YouTube channel called Pegasus Test. Les, thanks for coming on tonight. Glad to be aboard, Brent. All right, next we got Bruce, a.k.a. Boomer Jr. <laughs> Bruce at Camp Armin. He's my right-hand man at YouTube. Very few uh, YouTube uh, videos that I've posted that don't feature him. But uh, he was a former aircraft mechanic. He's also uh, got his own YouTube channel called Bruce at Camp Armament. And uh, he always brings that civilian perspective to the chat. Bruce, thanks for jumping on tonight. All right, next, we got the good doc, Dr. Christopher Larson. He's also got a YouTube channel called Christopher Larson. Be sure to check it out. He's an accomplished author. He's been, written many awesome books. He's got a new one. Doc, you want to plug your new book? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Op 4-5, um, Irregular and Hybrid Threat, so Irregular Warfare. Awesome. But uh, Doc is a U.S. Army veteran. He's also the founder of the One Shepherd Leadership Institute, going 40-plus years strong now. Doc, thanks for jumping on tonight, and welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, and last individual we have tonight, I might have another one jump on later. But we got Mike Klein from Small Team Supply. He is the creator of the ARRPK Upper, which you guys have probably seen featured in many of my videos. And uh, he also brings an ent interesting civilian perspective to the chat. He's a black hat instructor at the One Shepherd e Leadership Institute and always brings an awesome perspective. So, uh, Mike, thanks for jumping on tonight. Hey, thanks for having me. And also, he's got his own YouTube channel called Small Team Supply. Be sure to check that out. <laughs> so... Let me, uh, I'm going to kick it back over to Les. I do want to preface something just in case, uh, you know, people are coming from left field and they're just not under understanding what's going on. Okay. Um, uh, so let me just clarify real quick. Let me pull this up. So this is an AR pistol. All right. It's classified as a pistol by the ATF and several years back. These things that you see on there came out. They're called stabilizing braces, and uh, it's not considered a stock because if it was a stock, it would be considered a short barrel rifle that you essentially have to pay a two hundred dollar tax stamp and uh, register the weapon as a you know NFA item. So the stabilizing brace, uh, which was designed to attach to your arm, you know, for individuals that are handicapped, you know, came out. And uh, those have been on many weapons and many people own those and literally millions of Americans own these things. Millions. So with that being said, I'm going to kick it over to Les. Go ahead, buddy. You got the con. All right. Well, shocking to everybody that I just came back from SHOT Show and guess what the topic of conversation was? Yeah, so a lot of uh, uproar in the industry about this because there's several companies out there whose sole product is making braces, or at least the sole product that makes them money. Everybody who makes an AR puts out a braced version. Why? Because it sells. And the general consensus was there's at least 10 million of these things in circulation. The other thing that was uh, very interesting is the show floor was absolutely crawling with lawyers. And they all pointed out several interesting things. Uh, one of the things I found absolutely fascinating was one, one lawyer's point of view was that this is creating a special new category, the NFA, because a lot of talk was like, oh, hey, here's the chance to get a free SBR out of the deal if you're going to do one anyways, because you SBR it and then chuck off your brace and put a real stock on it. But the, some of the lawyers I heard from said, no, that's not the case that you will SBR it and you'll st still have to live with your pistol brace, which makes no sense. Other things I heard from lawyers were that uh, the tax is uh, in, law, in the law. It was d demanded by Congress and that the ATF does not have the ability to waive it. So they could be making us double criminals if we go ahead and register like they want and then say, oh, you didn't pay your tax after all. So there could be that problem. 
and just about everybody says standby lawsuits to come. So I think our 120 days at an absolute minimum are going to be extended pretty far out. Um, they don't have much to stand on. Bruins have been a big ruling. And also recently the bump stock was overturned. So while it sucks, this is coming down. I also think our chances of defeating it are pretty dang good. Sorry, I didn't really realize we're going to go back around the horn. Um, all right, so let, let me just like say, because I want to get deeper into this, but obviously um, shall not be infringed means shall not be infringed. So, you know, what the hell are we even doing here in this conversation? Um, beyond that, I'll say um, we, we need, we're, we're fighting over bread comes under the table here, guys. Uh, this is not the fight we should be, you know, the hill we should be dying on. Let's let's go to another one. Uh, of course, I agree that this should be available to every American that wants to purchase it, um, meaning little short-barreled rifles, pistols with braces, and all of this other silly stuff. Um, that should absolutely be available. Um, but this isn't the hill to die on. Let's let's go and do something far more profound. Okay. All right, guys. So bear with me. I'm, I'm being told my my uh, signal's not the best. That may be the the, the, the unmarked van out back that says uh, I support the BATF on the, on the back sticker. They may be jamming me up, but uh, we're going to give this a go anyway. So I've I've got a few notes here because this is something that I think about a lot. I'm kind of passionate about not 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 pistol braces. I don't own one, but it's not about pistol braces. Okay, it's not about bomb stocks. It's that slippery slope about control. So. Um, first of all, let me let me give you guys my stance because I've done this before, but inevitably people are going to start calling me the, an NFA FUD or an NFA boomer or whatever whatever type of derogatory term they want to put towards me, and that's that's fine. But I've been around longer than a lot of you guys, and I've focused on this pretty much on my whole life. So first of all, my stance is this. I don't believe the BATF should have the authority to control anything firearms related. I'm that guy that thinks that if you want to have a nuclear submarine in your swimming pool, you should be able to have one. That's that's my view on firearm ownership in this country. I understand what it's about, what the Second Amendment about, why it was it was put there. And we have we we Americans, we us, our grandparents, our great grandparents, we as as Americans have allowed and created a, a BATF and a government and a president and a Congress that we say to the federal government, you can decide what weapon we own before we go to war with you. Essentially, that's what it is. It would be just like in the 80s if we went to Russia and said, look, we're about to adopt the M16A2. Uh, will you guys approve this? You can do it. That's essentially what we as a, as, a, as a populace have done. And the fact that we've done that, well, now we have to abide by those rules. That's our only choice. So I wanted to take this first moment before we get into the pistol brace or bump stock discussion, just to understand this is, what, this is where we are. We're here because we allow it. We could all tomorrow as gun owners go up and, and abolish the, the BATF. We could all do this tomorrow, but simply through voting, simply through legislative action without ever firing a shot. Everybody seems to think that we must we must all go to war and everybody's scared to fire the first shot. We don't have to do that. We've got the numbers to sh put it to an end right now. But the problem is, is that we don't have our own house in order. I got a good friend, one of my best friends, who's been a firearm owner his entire life. He got his first M16A2 when he was probably 18. And he owns probably 30 military firearms today. And he was texting me all this pro-Trump stuff. And I said, well, you know, Trump, Trump's a gun grabber. What are you talking about? This is the first I ever heard of that. I said, look, bro. I says, look up the bump stock, man. Oh, I don't care about bump stocks. I don't, I don't even need bump stocks. Those things are stupid. All right. These are the gun owners that we've got to deal with. And if you didn't ask him about his specific position on that, he would be, he, you would think he was the most conservative pro-gun guy out there. He doesn't have 
a, a he doesn't have a gun safe. He's got a freaking gun closet, a walk-in gun closet. And this guy is the first one in line to give away bump stocks. And I guarantee you he'd feel the same way on pistol braces because he does own one. Okay, so it's not just this. I'm not making this about Trump. I'm telling you that he's completely complacent as a, gun, a lifetime gun owner and giving away his Second Amendment rights to the president or to or to a government agency or whoever steps up in line and says, I want it. As long as it doesn't directly impact him at that moment. That's our enemy. Our enemy is our own selves because we did this to ourselves. Boomer out. Yeah, a hundred percent. You get the government you deserve. Unfortunately, that's collectively. Um, I do find it interesting, though, that with this position, the ATF, ATF's working, um, it actually is going to influence Americans to have more effective weapons than uh, than we would have with our shorties. So I don't know. Just curious is all. Um, I think this is going to go down similar to how the bump stock thing went down. It's going to put the manufacturers out of business. It's going to, you know, work its way through the courts. And three years later, they'll say, ah, you could actually have that stuff. But, uh, you know, in the meantime, you got to play the felony uh, lottery. So if you if you want to play that game at all. The felony lottery. <laughs> That's not one I want to win. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with with Bruce here. Um, I'm surprised Doc took the not die on this hill approach on this one. So we'll we'll let him defend it here in a minute. Um, I'm gonna say not one more inch, okay? And uh, you know why do I say that? Because we've seen this just like Bruce was saying with the uh, bump stocks. You had multiple gun owners that you know they didn't care about the bump stocks. I've Never have owned a bump stock. Never cared for. Them. However, I never wanted them to be banned. And I, uh, you know, I wrote my congressman and all that stuff. And uh, when that all came out, because I didn't want to give one more inch on that stuff. All right. And, uh, you know, the same is true with 7N6, you know, the, seven, the 545 ammunition. You know, there wasn't very many AK-74 owners out there. So there wasn't a big uproar about it. And guess what? They banned the importation of that seven and six ammunition into the country because there wasn't a big enough uproar. Look what happens when they try to do the same thing for green tip ammunition, right? Well, there's a whole shitload of a AR owners in this country and there's a huge uproar about it and we stop them. All right. So I, I don't want to, we should not take this approach as just because it's like a small percentage of people that fall into this one category or use these one particular items. We shouldn't fight and die on that hill. I think we need to like draw the line. Like we've given up enough, right? The NFA alone was too much. That needs to be abolished. So I've got a, uh, I you know I agree with with Mike. You know I, I think this thing is eventually going to be overturned. Unfortunately, it's going to take some time. And uh, we just had one more guy jump in here, and this is Jared, who you guys may recognize. He was my competitor on the Sear Challenge. Jared, thanks for jumping on. Yeah, man. How you guys doing? I wanted to invite him because he's new to YouTube. What's your channel called again? Uh, Two Alpha Solutions. Awesome, man. Well, welcome aboard. Uh, we were actually just going around the horn, so it's perfect timing, man. If you want to give your uh, two cents on, uh, yeah, which uh, you you'll have, have to excuse me. I'm on. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm on my phone here. It was the only way I could get on here tonight. So if it's a little, little jittery or whatever, it's because I'm moving around. So. Um, I appreciate you letting me in here, and um, I just got home and got settled in and got the yoders sitting here next to me on the couch down here in the basement. So, um, but yeah, this whole this whole um, uh, pistol brace thing and everything else it's it's going to open up a can of worms, I think, uh, and just really it's going to screw a lot of people over and. Um, Something I've been thinking about is if it does pass and it goes through or whatever it's going to do, what are people really going to do when the ATF stacks up on your front door and and comes in with a warrant? There's very few people, I think, that are going to 
going to resist their commands and resist that warrant. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be a few that do. And I think there's a lot of people that's going to get hurt over it. Um, so I'll turn that back over to you guys and uh, see what you think about it. But that's just the thought I've been having here lately. Um, what are you going to do when they stack up on your door with a warrant? All right, guys, the floor is open. Well, I, I can take that if Les isn't going to jump on it. First of all, Jerry, yeah. welcome to the screen. Bruce, tradition. Got to oh, be go on ahead, Les. You, you got it. Listen, I, what did I say? You, you got it, brother. You got it. <laughs> Well, Jared brings up an incredibly valid point, you know, when the law breaks in, how are you going to come? Hands on your head or your trigger on your gun? That's going to be every man's personal decision. However, the one thing that's not banned yet is nods, which is very helpful for gardening at night. And that might be a good piece of advice for people to follow until this blows over. Um, but for sure, uh, this is going to the courts. The interesting thing, though, is, guys, this is try number four on braces, you know. They tried about 10 years ago, and it they reversed their own ruling before it hit the public. Um, I forgot what the second time was. The third time was they tried to get it in with the bump stocks, and it got thrown out of that. So this is try number four. Um, so far, we've got a string of victories. We shouldn't be complacent, regardless if you think that, you know, F the government or whatever. You still got to fight the battle. You still do have, maybe it's not the hill to die on, but the battle still needs to be fought. So write your congressman, bug both your senators, pester everybody, make life hell on them. And if you live in a state where your guy is very pro 2A, still give him shit because what is he introduced to repeal shit? You know, for all our politicians out there who say they're pro 2A, some of them do help us keep the bad stuff away, but none of them repeal anything that gets in place. You know, I want to hear that politician out there telling me about repealing the NFA because one of the things I think the uh, stabilizing brace has done has proven just how silly SBRs are. You know, even the Europeans don't care about the length of the barrel. I mean, it's actually hard to go to Europe and shoot a competition and try to explain to someone over there exactly what a stabilizing brace is because they doesn't matter to them you know so if the europeans can be that advanced in their laws it shows how lacking we are well okay so you're kind of hitting the nail on the head first off um we haven't had any victories in the classic sense of the word i, I i'm not a big sports guy but i know the difference between offense and defense in football right the offense has the football and the defense is saying yeah, don't bring that down to my end zone. Okay, I got that. We we haven't gone on the offense at all, not since 1934. You're going to look at these recent U.S. Supreme Court, and that wasn't our offense winning. We never did anything like that. We didn't raise a friggin' finger. That was the Supreme Court coming and saying, hey, anti-gunners, your offensive effort here failed. That's not the same thing as us having a victory, guys. That's all going, oh, Thank God they missed the field, the field goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what that is. It's like, oh, well, you missed the field goal. Oh, thank God. And we're going to pat ourselves on the back like we've had a victory. We haven't had a single one. So when I say it's not the hill to die on, look, past is prologue. It means if you want to understand what's going to happen in the future, look what's happened in your past. Uh, not only all the bands, but um, pistol brace. Oh, that's right. We haven't won that one yet. We didn't win the bump stock. We haven't won suppressors. We haven't won any of these things. We've watched time and time again things be taken away from us and then just sit there in our basements praying that, oh, oh, maybe this won't be, this won't go. Maybe this will go our way. And once again, the Supreme Court will come and save us in 11 years from now. Um, okay, that's a technique. Um, it doesn't work out for us too often. Um, how about we go on the offense? I don't want to die on the defense. If I'm going to die, so to speak, we're talking figuratively here, let's die on the offense. There is right now um, a, a court case going up challenging the NFA. In fact, I think there's several. And this comes after both Bruin and West Virginia versus C, uh, the CPA. Um, 
And so CPA, is that right? EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, right. And so those are two last year landmark cases. These are critical, critical cases. Obviously, Bruin said, stop asking the second question. Does it have historic precedence? Does this, you know, this law, that this ban that we're recommending, does it have historic precedence? And also, is it good for people? Is it good for people isn't even, you know, they just said, throw that, throw that crap out. It's only historic precedence. And so here's where you're going to lose on bump stocks and pistol braces and, and even somewhat suppressors. But anytime the NFA has banned something, full auto, and some innovative American comes and says, well, okay, then I'm going to follow the letter of the law. I'm going to make sure this is not full auto. I'm going to do a binary trigger or a force reset trigger or a bump stock or a this or a that or a this or a that. And I'm going to make sure with lawyers and attorneys, I'm going to hire them. We're going to have this whole team that comes together and says, man, you're not violating the law. Yet, and this is what West Virginia versus the EPA was about. Yet then a bureaucrat comes and says, I see what you did. You ran an end zone around my law. So I'm just going to make a ruling. Well, um, the EPA lost against West Virginia last summer, and the, the Supreme Court very, very clearly said, bureaucrats, your days are numbered and your power is limited. No, you can't do that. You got to go to Congress. Well, of course, the bureaucrats are going to try and ignore that. So we've got all these things going, and you guys want to get up and die on that hill. Hey, no, not one more inch, but it's not true. They'll take many, many, many more miles, and, and we'll lose. How do I know? I just look at our history. I look at the history of the last 100 years and, and tell you how we've lost and lost and lost and lost and never went on the offensive. Here's the offensive. You want to put your money where your mouth is? Find that court case. And I'm sorry I didn't come with it in my hip pocket. I should have. Someone can Google it, I'm sure. Find that court case where they're citing Bruin, where they're citing the most recent Supreme Court cases, and they're saying, look, the NFA, and they're actually quoting the NFA documents from, you know, back in the 30s and everything else. They've got a senator on there saying, of course, this is, of course, this is unconstitutional. We would never get this passed. So we're going to make a tax instead and a registry because at least we're not banning it. And now, of course, and they just stopped all that. So here's my point. Here's my point. They were looking at Bruin and they said, my God, Bruin just opened the door to shut down the NFA. Let's shut down the NFA. Guys, if we shut down the NFA, we don't need pistol braces because SBRs aren't a thing. If we shut down uh, the NFA, we don't need bump stocks because there's really no difference between full auto and semi-auto. I mean, it's just whatever. That's a, that's a mechanical difference. Um, if we shut down the NFA, uh, we, we can get suppressors. There's so many things we can do if we go on the offense and shut down the NFA. I want to fund that. I want to go on the offense. I don't want to sit here on this hill. Great idea, Doc. Where's our political leader? political leader, you have a lawsuit going in to the, in the that, that they want to elevate to the Supreme Court. Oh, yeah, you fight the lawsuit, but you got to have somebody change it in the law, too. You know, you got to you got to attack both avenues. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if that's if that's how you're going to look at it, you're absolutely right. But that's OK, because we did have Bruin last year. We did have uh, West Virginia versus EPA that the Supreme Court did, in fact, rule in gun um, owners' rights and to the Second Amendment and to human rights and took that side. And we just had Oregon say, I don't care. The state of Oregon and the state of Illinois just said, I, I don't really care what the Supreme Court says. I'm going to take away everybody's semi-automatic firearms. I just don't want them. And it doesn't matter. I don't have to listen to. And, and, and the irony and, and the hypocrisy, you listen to Chicago and, you know, the governor saying, these sheriffs that said that they won't uphold our illegal you know, law, they don't have the right to pick and choose. Only I have the right to pick and choose which federal you know, laws I follow, but they don't have the right to pick and choose which state laws I you know, make up on a whim. And so uh, my point here is, look, I mean, this kind of gets to what Jared was saying. What are you going to do when the boys come for you? Well, let's look at past his prologue, past his prologue. What did the German citizens do when the Nazis came for the Jews next door? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Nothing. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Let's so most people, are, most people are going to roll over and, and, and take it. You know, 95, 99% of them. You're only going to have a few few percent that are going to actually actively actively resist. And you know who that's going to be, Jared? I tell you what, who that few percent is. That few exactly. percent is overwhelmingly going to be police officers. Yes. They are going to be the well, ones. I hope so. Yeah. I hope the, so. Oh, trust me. Trust me. Plenty of those police officers, police departments, and police leadership will toe the line for, you know, for the evildoers. I mean, they, they will. But there will be more, frankly, quite well, a bit. Illinois more. right now is yeah. a great example of that. What's that? Illinois is a great example of that right now. Yeah. We have, the last I heard, and it's been a couple of days, 67 out of however many counties they have, the, the, the sheriffs of the county say they're not going to uphold that law. They're not going to enforce it. That's right. But that doesn't stop the federal government coming in and stacking up on your door, though, to get it. No, nope, no, nope, it doesn't. So what you need to do is like Missouri and start saying, "Now, nah, guys, you're not allowed to enforce Ill illegal laws." So you, right. you've got to start. You got to start at the state level, the county level, then the state level. That's how you build up. But you know what? So we can sit here and wring our hands and say, "Oh, this is so scary going on the offense," but we're going on the offense, guys. That's all going on the offense. Me, the majority of people. Go ahead, Bruce. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Jared. You're on a roll, brother. No, the, the majority of people, they're they're not going to put their lives and their families and, and their their whatever in jeopardy over a pistol brace. They're not going to do it. Or, Even or, the murdering, or the murdering, the systematic government uh, democide of their neighbors. They're still just going to sit there and watch and go, oh, my God, that's abhorrent. That's shocking. Oh, I feel so bad for my neighbors. And that's the end of it. You know, whatever. An exactly. emotional sign on their Facebook. Um, and that's it. But you know what? But we knew that about the Germans in under Nazis. We knew that about you know the Russians under the Soviets and the uh, North Koreans under the communist uh, regime. Uh, we also knew that about Americans in the um, American Revolution, the Civil War. Most of them wouldn't raise a finger to help themselves or their neighbors. And we aren't talking most of them like oh you know sixty percent or seventy percent. We're talking ninety plus percent of Americans wouldn't lift a finger to save themselves let alone absolutely, absolutely not you yeah. know the majority of the people that were involved in the civil war didn't really care about what side they were on they were fighting for their state yeah 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 and most you of them didn't care which side won they were they were fighting for the the glory whenever they thought war was glorious yeah yeah well but i nonetheless i still want to go on the offense legally i'm talking yeah, bro. Well, I was just going to say, yeah, obviously, let's go on offense. Absolutely. But you still got to play defense, Doc. You can't just go offense. Using your football analogy, if you just play offense, you're going to get steamrolled and they're going to keep scoring on you. Did we so just fight to bend your ass? Did we just fight at Winter Forge where I was defense almost the entire time and you were <laughs> offense? Like, you had no defense. All right, man? <laughs> hey, hey, what happened when you went to offense, too? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, stop ruining really it. Pretty. I haven't published the video yet. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't pretty. Um, ah, shit. I just, oh, yeah, speaking of Winter Forge, uh, Mike, we were talking about, you know, the states like Texas came out and said, hey, if you produce a, a, you know, a silencer here in the state of Texas, it's legal. But there was other states before Texas said that that did the same thing, and all of a sudden the ATF came and – that state did not not I'm not talk to, not talking about Texas, I'm talking about a different state. I'm hoping Mike can help me out here. That yeah, state I think it was uh, Kentucky or maybe Tennessee, something like that. Mm -hmm. And they they basically hung the guy out to dry. The feds come in, said, "Hey, you're producing this NFA item." He says, "Hey, by state law, I'm doing everything right." The state's like, "Eh, let him burn." And then that guy's left on defense by himself, and the majority of people. They cannot afford to defend themselves in an appropriate way to be able to win against these cases like that. You know, the, um, there's another big YouTuber out there that has a huge ATF case right now, and he has a lot of support from from the outside world. If that would be you or me or, or the the peasant out here, we would have to plead out because we can't afford to fight it.
I don't know, though. I think if you lawyer up and you start a fundraiser that, you know, that captures the the fancy. I mean, um, the kid, I'm sorry, the kid up there in like, uh, what was it, Wisconsin, who yeah. def- defended himself, um, Ryden, Ryden Hour, Ryden Hour. Yeah. 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 That dude. That, okay. I know we're all just like butchering the poor kid's name. Uh, but, you know, here it is. He just faced uh, just a trial and error, a baptism of fire, just a night of horror where he was victimized and targeted. And uh, and he defends himself. He defends himself with just, you know, professional, way above his operating area. You know, not only like efficiency, but the professionalism. Like he didn't shoot people he didn't intend to shoot, not even wounding them. Everybody he shot was somebody who was attacking him and someone he intended to shoot. Um, the proficiency um, and the professionalism this kid uh, exhibited was fascinating. And I think it captured the fascination of the United States. And I know I was ponying up money. I know other people were too. Yeah, sure. Maybe it's 25 bucks, but you know what? You know, 3 million of us are ponying up 25 bucks. That dude, (laughs) that dude had money galore to defend himself and won and won. So thank goodness he won. Yeah. No shit. Thank goodness. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank goodness. Yeah. So so we haven't had a few things. I'm going to, I got a few points here. Justice Scalia, who recently passed away, a Supreme court justice that was considered extremely conservative said, and I'm going to paraphrase here, something to the effect that we haven't had states rights since the civil war. And he's right. He's right. The civil war was about states rights. Any way that you look at it, you go back in history and the South, those that were supportive of states' rights as as individual states having more power than the federal government lost. So it's just that simple. So, of course, the federal government came in and said, now federal government takes precedent over states' rights. Why is that? Why is that important now? Well, that's important now in this discussion, because you may have sheriffs which are elected come in and say, we're not enforcing this law because it's not popular among our people. And that's fine. And that's commendable to them. But that doesn't stop the feds from coming in and enforcing that law. So does it matter to you whether you've got a sheriff shooting your dog and kicking your door in, or you got a federal agent shooting your dog and kicking your door in? Your dog still got shot and your door still got kicked in. So until sheriffs stand up and form a perimeter around your house and say, we're not allowing you into this guy's house. And if you try to come, we will fire on you. And that may have happened a couple of times in the past over different issues. Um, But it rarely happens, guys. That rarely happens. And that's not going to happen in this situation because no sheriff's going to lose his life over your supposed right to own a pistol brace. Let's get for real. Okay. Like Jared said, like dark doc said, no one wants to lose their life over a piece of plastic when it's easier to comply than to die. And it's just not going to happen. And that's the reality of it. Um, I want to change subject just for a minute. I want to ask you guys something because Brent supposedly has got super chat set up now. Okay. And why this is important is because he has had to spend money getting all of his streaming stuff set up. He does these streams for free. You guys know this. And he's too humble of a guy to ask for a little help. And I'm not going to ask for your money, but here's what I am going to ask for. One of you who use Super Chats, and I'm sure one of you out there do, send Brent $2. $2. And let's see if this system works. That's all I'm asking is just one of you try $2 to just see if it even works. Uh, go ahead, Brent. Yeah, I see you want to say something. It works. I know it works because I've tried it already. So, so Brent I've, is the I've, first I've, Super Chat donor. <laughs> he donated himself $2, <laughs> but he has already charged it back through his bank account as an unauthorized charge because I know how thrifty he is. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Boston, I see you say Google takes 35%. Look, baby steps, brother. I, I'm going to talk to Brent about this. I know a little bit about it. I'm sure that his his system will will improve over time. 
but let's just all, all I'm saying is and here's and here's Brent's rule and Brent you correct me if I'm wrong but but I think that if you do a super chat uh, then uh, Brent will uh, whatever comment you've got Brent we will address it for right now we're gonna, there you go there you go cipher 20, 20 bucks appreciate you brother wow thank you cipher thank you and it worked and and Brent's very appreciative he's 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 literally all right, on, all right. let's move on uh, we're gonna move <laughs> we're gonna move on but he's literally googling coupons right now for his his next military that he's gonna buy up that 20 bucks all right so let me get let me get back on on topic here because okay, I've got let me, a few let me help you let me help you get back on topic because I want to respond okay. to different, so we're clear I think we're we're all saying the same thing, but I want to make sure our intent is clear. Look, Jared and Bruce and myself have all said, yes, people, you know, don't want to die for a bump stock, like literally die. We're not talking politically or figuratively or anything like that. Um, and we've talked about the great reluctance. It's great because I don't want this to go to kinetic. Let me be very, very clear. I don't want any of this go kinetic into a shooting war. That does not mean that I don't think we absolutely have to take offensive action, offensive legal, offensive political, offensive social action here. So while I agree, I don't, I don't want anyone. I don't care which side of the issue you are. You're an American. You're my fellow American. I don't want you dead or maimed. You know, that doesn't. However, that doesn't mean I'm saying, oh well, since you know none of us are willing to, you know, take a bullet through the head th for it, therefore it's not a worthy a worthy fight. No, this is very much a worthy fight. It's a very much a worthy fight because it impacts future generations. So these are my kids and my grandkids and my great grandkids uh, generation. This is about preserving America and making America the place that, uh, that it promised the world to be. So I, th I think the fight is definitely here. Um, I fully advocate for it. Um, I, I am and will continue to take action myself. Um, but but I don't want to have this notion that we're saying, oh, well, since no one's willing to draw blood for it and no one's willing to be a martyr, let's all walk away from it. That's that's not the case at all. Yeah. So I just want to weigh in here. Uh, I think you're wrong, Doc. I, I don't think police departments or any of the sort are going to be the ones that would take this kinetic. It's going to be the guys that are already in the fight, like you're saying, that are bringing legal cases that are actually doing political activism, those guys, it's just a progression, right? You generally speak or participate in the movement before you actually start picking up rifles and going the rest of the way. So it's a very limited supply of people. Now, granted, maybe more people would join the fight later on, but right out of the gate, it's going to be the guys that are already in the process, so to speak, because people that are already committed thinking in their head that this might go kinetic once you process that you start thinking whoa 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 what can i do to to not make it go kinetic what what actions can i do now to prevent that eventuality from ever occurring because when the reality dawns on you like that's a horrible situation so i'm going to do everything in my power to prevent that from coming to fruition but i will say there are guys that are in the fight, and at the very least, we need to support them. Like Cody Wilson, for example, he'd been in the fight. Man, his life is freaking forfeit for his political activism in First Amendment and Second Amendment, right? Um, you don't have to go as far as he did to be engaged, like you're saying. But if you do want <laughs> or are willing to forfeit your life, so to speak, you could go the way and be a martyr for the cause, not by pulling a trigger, but by doing these political slash legal arguments. Yes, that's a good that's a good point. I mean, it's you know, you, you can you can sort of ruin your life or give up your life savings and and in your entire future. Uh, not just by being behind gun and a trigger, but you can do it economically by, by taking on a lawsuit. And many have, many have done that. Many have come before you. I want, I've got about five rants that I want to make. And you guys know when I get fired up and there's no way I'm probably going to be able to get them all in on this stream because I'll just be hogging everybody's time. And that's not fair because I'm not even that bright, but I want to talk about the shall not 
not comply crowd because I'm seeing a lot of comments from you guys and others on shall not comply. Let me tell you something. I'm just going to slap you in the face with the wet leather glove of reality. If you've got a pistol brace, you already are compliant. You've got a big T-shirt on that says I comply. All right. Unless you've got a full auto machine gun with armor piercing bullets and a grenade launcher mounted under it with high explosive rounds in that. And you're going to local training classes and using that weapon regularly. You're already in the comply crowd. If you've got a pistol brace, you've already complied. You've already said, hey, look, I want an SBR, but I want it legally. And I don't want to go the SBR route. So I'm going to put a pistol brace on my gun and I'm going to go out there and, and I'm going to, I'm not going to do full auto because that's, that's against the law. So I'm complying with 1934 law. All right. I'm going to make sure that I'm in compliance every, in every way that I can. And they told me that I'd be in compliance uh, six months ago if I had a pistol brace on my gun. So I got a pistol brace on my gun. You're already the complier. Every pistol brace I see, unless you're a handicapped person and you actually need that brace for what it was intended for, and that's what, not less than one-tenth of a percent of you guys, okay, unless you're that guy, you're already in compliance. You don't need to tell us you're in compliance. You're literally holding up a sign that says, I comply, while your mouth is saying, shall not comply. Let's go back in time for a minute. We had a whole bunch of veterans come back from World War II, our greatest generation, okay, that brought back machine guns from Europe, submachine guns, MP40s, SCG44s, Beretta MP38s, all kinds of machine guns. And they already did what you think you're doing, what you think you're doing that's new and that's trendy. They said the same thing. They said, shall not comply. So what did they do? They put those submachine guns in their footlocker, they closed that footlocker up in the attic, never to take it out again, because they couldn't go out in public with it. They couldn't go tell bragging about what they had because it was illegal. They were not complying. They died now, and we saw this happen by the thousands in the 1980s and 1990s when that greatest generation started passing away. And then there were story after story after story. Just Google, just Google World War II machine gun found in footlocker and see how many stories you get. Grandkids go up, they open up grandpa's footlocker. They're like, oh my God, I never knew my granddad went through this, through all this hell. He was a war hero. What is this? Oh, this looks like an evil freaking gun. So what did they do with that gun? They call the local police and they say, hey, we found this submachine gun we didn't know granddad had. What do we do with it? And they either turned it over to the local police or they turned it over to the BATF who ground it up. Or if we were lucky, if we were lucky, they took it to a local museum and they donated it to the local museum. None of that matters because what's the real point? It's not about the gun. Guns don't kill people. It's about the individual. The BATF doesn't care what guns you've got. The BATF wants to make sure you don't use them and future generations don't use them. So if you go shall not comply and you're going to hide it somewhere, you're going to plaster it up in your wall. And you're going to sit back going, <laughs> I got one over on the BATF. I've got that pistol brace hit in my wall and they don't know. They're fine with that because you're not combat effective because you're not training with it because you're not passing it down to future generations. They have effectively taken that weapon system off out of, out of circulation without having to fire a shot. They don't want to come kick your door in and create some shit storm on the news like they did of Randy Weaver. Trust me, they've learned their lesson on that. That's not what they want to do. They don't want another Waco on their hands. They just want you, they want that weapon out of circulation. And they will have accomplished that. And they don't have to come and get that weapon today when you're ready for them, when you're fired up and ready to go. They'll just wait 40 years till you're dead and, so, and your kids are in that wall and your kids or grandkids turn that weapon in, hand it over to them voluntarily. That you shall not comply, guys, are suckers. And I love you. I want to give you a hug like they do in like the Italian movies and whisper in your ear, you're a sucker. Because that's what you're doing. So 
for, for, for those that are worried about the BATF coming and kicking in your door, that's probably not going to happen. Look, you go on social media, you start posting about, well, I, I shall not comply. I got all of this, and I'm going to be braggadocious about it. All right, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll taunt them into coming after you for sure. But most of you are not going to do that. Most of you are thinking, I'm just going to hide it, and it won't ever be an issue. And you're doing nothing but being selfish because you're only worried about you who's not actually doing anything, and you're not worried about our future generations, your kids and your grandkids, who may actually nut up and, and actually do something. All right, that's that's rant number one. I'm going to hand it over to breathe, you guys. Breathe, Bruce, breathe. Jared is shocked. Jared is like, what the F did I get myself into? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to step back, and me and Evan are going to have a conversation. Who's going to follow that one up? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I will. First off, I absolutely Bruce, lay it down. <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely agree with Bruce that it, whenever I see that, well, ha ha ha, I'm gonna tell him I all lost it on a fishing trip. I'm like, well, then you, you just did exactly. You complied. You did exactly. Oh, you didn't do it down to the letter. They wanted you to hand over your goods so that they could have them, sell them to some poor country like Mexico, and make money off of it. But the point is that you still did exactly what they said to do. They said, you can't have these. You went, yes, I can. And then you buried them and you no longer have them. Um, you don't. You don't have them. Like uh, That's like me saying, oh, I still have a Russian-made AKM. I bought it legally in Iraq, 25 bucks from a police chief. And then I built it up and did all this wonderful stuff. But I couldn't bring it back to the United States, so I handed it off to a fellow contractor who in turn held, handed it off to a, a common friend of ours, an Iraqi, who now owns it in Iraq. I don't own it. I complied. I got rid of it. Now, in my mind, I can sit there and go, hmm, it's mine because I paid for it legally. Yeah, okay. It's in Baghdad somewhere. I'll never see it again. Um, and so that's, I do agree with you, Bruce. The, but, you know, the negativity of Bruce's, uh, sorry, but the negativity of your of your rant there was that we can't do anything about it. And and it dawns on me that, that we already have. This was a ban that was incredibly deadly and it was an incredibly effective ban. I mean, police agencies all over were on board. We, we still write stories about, oh, the untouchables and everything else, completely missing the fact that they were outlawing alcohol, alcohol, beer. Into, were, into the Bill of Rights. Yeah, they were killing people and imprisoning them for life over booze and eventually, and eventually, Americans said, enough is enough. People went into courts and either the entire jury turned their chair around with their backs to the uh, court to get a null trial, or they learned quickly, don't turn your chair around. Listen, go, hmm, he did all those things right, not guilty. So you ask for a jury by tri uh, trial by jury. And what I'm saying is, it's been settled in the courts. We won this one. We can win this again. So I, while I agree with you, I really do agree with you, Bruce. I mean, the tone tonight is, oh, is rather defeatist. And I'm like, no, no, that's my problem with let's let's stand on this hill and not back down one more inch. I'm like, because we know that's not true. Let's go on the offense. Well, again, you know, it goes back to if you're willing to trade lead, you should be willing to do the other work. Before. Before, yeah. Because who wants that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what is it? The four the four boxes, right? It's your soap box, your ballad box, your jury box, and then the cartridge box. In that order. You don't throw the cartridge box up front. You do all the legwork, the social political legwork, then the legal legwork, and if everything fails, then you go to a shooting war. But that's the last measure. All right. But so how many that, people are going to be be willing to get into that shooting war? Very few, I think. No, but that's all it should take. That's all it should take. And. Good example here. People have poo pooed it in the comments, but there is a thing to be learned from Bundy because he stood up, the government backed down, 
Yes, they arrested him later, but he won his day in court. He no longer owes the government any money. He won. Yeah, he, he lost his wife and kid in the process. Now, now, guys, that's that's putting your money where your mouth is. He lost his wife and his kid in the process, but he won his court case, and he was cleared of all charges in the end. Um, but but I promise you that the BATF took note of that. That was humiliating to them. And they realized that that was not the type of of flack that they wanted. That was not a victory for them because his wife and kid doesn't mean shit to them. That was not a victory for them. That was that ended up being a political loss, just like Are Waco you, was a political loss. Yeah, yeah. Are you conflating? Wait, I thought Bundy was the cattle guys out in Nevada. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. you're right. I'm conflating Bundy with Ruby Ridge. I was thinking yeah. of Ruby Ridge, but I think that's the same situation oh, because with, yeah, with was it Randy Randy winning. Weaver? Randy Weaver at Ruby Ridge also, in the end, was exonerated from all charges that the BATF had pressed on him as well. So that's another victory. And and while you know the Branch Davidians were never exonerated, um, the the way the federal government law enforcement handled that was such a massive black eye. I mean, the the story I tell about that, and there's lots of stories to tell about this, but the one I remember most, the one that sticks in my head was a few years later, I'm in Washington, D.C. I was working there. Uh, I think I'd just gotten out of the Army. This is back in the, uh, you know, maybe late 90s. And uh, my neighbor, my next door neighbor, was this British gentleman. So I'm out there, I don't know, mowing my lawn one summer morning. We strike up a, a conversation over beer. And he starts talking about, you know, uh, Waco, Texas. And I said, Waco, Texas. He's like, oh yeah, we were glued to our sets in England over this. We just for, you know, for whatever it was, six, eight months or six, eight weeks, whatever it was. I was like, why in God's green earth did England give a damn about what was going on in Waco, Texas? And I mean, I don't even think he looked up from like clipping the, the hedge that he was doing. He just says, matter of factly, as he continues to work on his lawn, you know, manicure, he's like, Oh, well, we wanted to know if the nation that uh, was built on religious freedom would actually set people on fire in a church and kill all of them. And I was so stunned by that. And I said, well, you got your answer, didn't you? I don't yeah, that's agree. another point you know, that will be, we talk about who's going to fight who. I guarantee you at Waco... They didn't tell the crew that CEV go in there and burn will, women and children because the government doesn't like them. No, they sat there. I guarantee they went to that crew. Look, there's meth heads in there and they're molesting children. You tell any tank crew that, they'll be, yes, sir, my tank will be in there. <laughs> you know, that's what they told them. They didn't tell them like, hey, yeah, go up there. These guys told the government to piss off and we don't like them because they worship weird. No, they never told them that. <laughs> Yeah, small point. The point is that government, that's how the government will fight you. Like it's not going to be people that are against you. There are going to be people following orders, and they're going to be following a different set of orders to what's going on. But my point is government overreach and gover government overreaction. Boston massacre. These sort of things do not fare well for the government. It delegitimizes them in the eyes of the non-combatant populace. It it builds favor, favoritism to their opponents, sympathies for their opponents. So I, I can promise you that if you ask some idiot ATF guy that wants to, he's like, I'm a sniper and I want to shoot babies up at Ruby Ridge because that guy was a psycho that wanted to shoot children. Um, and he's very happy that he got the opportunity to. Um. Yeah, there's going to be those because there's going to be those in any institutions. I don't care if you're talking about banking or elementary school. There's going to be sick people, right? Some of them get through. Um, those issues aside, the fact that the government is all too willing and has some sick individuals in it that are willing to kill citizens. Um, yeah, okay, th that exists. You're missing the point. The point is that these kind of actions and behaviors by the government work against them, not for them. So the more people who say won't comply, actually, 
you know, those people who are willing to get themselves martyred, and I do not recommend it, it's ignorant of us to say, oh, yeah, that won't measure anything. No, actually, it, it does. It goes against. What, what do you think convinced people that booze was okay? It was the body count. It was so many Americans had been murdered by their government and imprisoned by their government for enjoying a beer or a wine that Americans said, enough, this is garbage, enough. And the, and the, and the government's stomach had turned by then too. You know, the senators still have constituents and they're like, yeah, this is really garbage. You know, to go back to uh, the one of your points there, Doc, about the government being, government being delegitimized. Le I can't talk tonight. I'm tired. Um, <laughs> the government doesn't. Yeah, the government doesn't care. They don't care if they get a black eye because in a, in a couple weeks, in a couple months, in a couple years, the general populace is going to forget about it. It's it's not an, an emotional connection for the general populace. It might be for a few. You know, but overall, people are going to forget. They don't. I don't know what the answer is to that, but the people have a very short term memory. Yeah, you should have got say, me on here. Go ahead. I, I just want to point out that, you know, uh, let's not forget to call out the uh, the master behind the curtain on this one. This is absolutely the Biden administration that's directing this, right? I mean, you look look what happened when Trump was like, no, let's get rid of bump stocks. Next thing you know, the ATF is drafting up, you know, their marching orders on getting rid of bump stocks. So <laughs> if, if it wasn't the Biden administration pushing this, this wouldn't happen. So let's not forget, you know, we're, it, it's easy to sit here and pound on the ATF, but they're just, they're just giving the, I sir, you know, uh, the orders are coming from higher. Yeah, and the Biden administration or any of them, they don't care. They don't care about the, the general population out here. They don't care about the people. All they want is the power and the control. And and um, I forgot where I was going with it. But um, all they're trying to do is get votes so they can continue to keep their power and keep their control. And right now, they're, the left with all the, the, the gun control stuff is the squeaky wheel. And that's where a lot of the focus is. Um, so the, the administration is going to listen to that side because that's where they're going to get the most votes. So they can continue. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, you should have got me on this podcast, uh, talking about this topic or one similar to it before COVID. Man, I, I'm telling you that that whole thing really put me in a funk as far as, uh, you know, how I view the resilience of, the, of America and institutions and everything. I mean, I don't know. I'm still I'm still trying to suss through uh, what piece that I can do to help uh, save our republic. Um, but but, you know, right now I'm just I'm just really. uh in a different place than I was a couple of years prior. I think one thing, everybody, well, several things everybody can do, as we mentioned early, write your pol political leaders, you know, make them know, you know, fill up their inboxes with the, I don't like this. You know, they'll, even the most hardcore uh, anti-gunner with the, their constituency is um, on them about it. They'll cave proof of that Dick Durbin in 2004 at Illinois, when the assault weapons ban was up for renewal, made the great statement, 70% of my constituents want the thing, but it's political suicide if I vote for it. We're Americans, if 70% of us can agree on anything, you no safer fucking vote. <laughs> um, the other thing you can do, go buy a gun. The more you buy, the harder it gets. Go buy one. If you're short on cash, suck it up, buy a high point. You know, but go buy a gun. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the numbers are of, of firearm ownership as far as a percentage today, but certainly since the death of the assault weapons ban that Clinton put in place, the, the we all know the AR-15 type has grown 
exponentially in popularity. And firearm ownership has grown in popularity. We've got people that own firearms that don't necessarily share the same political views as many of us do, but they do fear for their lives and fear for their families. We sort of saw this with like BLM and Antifa riots and all that during the whole Chinese virus thing. And it's uh, it's a huge number that own firearms. And as, as I said before, we're sort of our firearm, firearm owners. If we just came together in the big picture and said, it's fine if you love, if you've got a shrine of Nancy Pelosi in your bedroom and you worship her every night. It's fine if you voted for Joe Biden. It's fine if you got a coexist freaking sticker on your on your your battery car, okay? But you're a firearm owner and it, you, this is something that that you should be supportive of or firearm rights. If we could just get if we could come together under that umbrella of just being firearm owners, regardless of if any other political beliefs, we'd be a power to be reckoned with. But we we have to do that. We have to do that on our own. And it's difficult for us all to do. We haven't figured out how how to do that yet. I wanted to comment on Cypher's comment. Cypher, I think you sent a super chat. Thank you for that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to directly comment on this, but you said to the effect of um, the BATF was formed after prohibition. Imagine that. So I want to talk a little bit, a little bit about this. So the interesting thing is that my whole life I've been an, I've been an anti-drugger, believe it or not. I've not so much as ever smoked weed. And uh, I, I don't know that there's many Americans that can even say that. Right. I just I just know how I am. And I knew that if I ever tried marijuana and I loved it, that within within two weeks I'd be in a street corner somewhere doing uh, nasty things for a twenty dollar bill because I when I love something I go off the deep end so that's always scared me into not even trying it all right because I would I would be going from from marijuana to meth in about three seconds if I liked the experience I was getting so I'm just a teetotaler I'm Boomer Junior I'm just not touching the stuff but what's fascinating about that is that on the one hand I'm an anti drugger but on the other hand I'm a pro-gunner. And these things were regulated under the exact same method. And I don't know if it was Doc or Jared or, or that had mentioned this, but we talked about how that, that they couldn't ban a constitutional right. They couldn't come in and say drugs are illegal. Thank you, Teddy. They couldn't come in and say guns are illegal. So they regulated them. You can have heroin today. A lot of cops may not know this. But if a cop pulls you over and you've got a gallon of heroin in your car, if you have a tax stamp for that heroin, you're good to go. And tax stamps for heroin were issued. But what did the government do? They came in and said, we're not issuing any more tax stamps for heroin. If, you, if you're a, a stamp collector, and I know many of you may be not, but some of the most expensive stamps you can buy are tax stamps for narcotics. Because they were issued because they were legal. So the government came in and said, we're not going to allow you to have these hard drugs unless you pay a tax on them and get a tax stamp. And some people actually did that. And then the government came and said, we're not issuing any more tax stamps on these narcotics. And they stopped this like back in the 30s or 40s. So those stamps are extremely rare. Now, do you notice that they've done almost the exact same thing with machine guns? They said, you can't have a machine gun unless you have a tax stamp. We're not stopping your right to own something. We're simply placing a tax on it. And then they came up in the, in the 80s under Ronald Reagan, our great conservative president, and they said, we're not issuing any more tax stamps on machine guns. So I just wanted to, I wanted to tie that little bit of information in with a Cypher Super Chat. You guys look that up on your own, but it's a fascinating history. In reference to the tax stamps, so if these 10 to 40 million people out there that have these these pistol braces and they go and do everything properly and get a tax stamp and now they have an SBR, what's to say the ATF can't come back in five years and rescind all those tax stamps and now they have all these felons that are already registered? And, you know, I, I heard that from another channel today. Um, I can't remember which one it is off the end. But, um, I mean, that's a very, I think, a possibility. Yeah, that's the point I was making at the beginning. Several lawyers out there at SHOT Show were saying ATF doesn't have the ability to not charge you the tax. 
it's written in law. You have to pay the tax. And there's also conjecture out there that if you SBR your arm brace, that it's not categorized the same way. So you're not able to just sit there and go, okay, screw you, arm brace stock now that I have my thing. Because let's be honest, in one respect, if it was easy, it'd be a free tax now. <laughs> Well, they're they're trying to make it free for the next what 120 days or so. It might be. Yeah, it's probably less than that it's now. Not, it's not clear if you uh, have a uh, full SBR or not, or a special category of SBR. Uh, I think what's going to do this law in is it's so poorly written that that's where it's going to get kicked back. Mm -hmm. The, the, the problem with that list is is this, and I don't disagree. I agree, and I should address this. I don't disagree with that. It's it's poorly written. Um, there's a lot of um, spinoffs and a lot of things that are going to happen because of that poorly written law that they didn't anticipate. And they're either going to have to take their time and get it together and come up with a, a well understood law that they can codify and that they can get everybody behind or they're going or that it's going to it's going to be dismissed somewhere in court. Here's the problem with that. And it's just like the bump stock law. Trump comes out and says, I want to ban bump stocks, orders the government to do it with no legal basis at all. How many years ago was that? So for years, let's pretend that at some point officially bump stocks, the bump stock ban is deemed unconstitutional. Let's pretend that somewhere down the road, this brace ban is deemed unconstitutional. Hell, let's pretend that somewhere down the road, the machine gun ban is deemed unconstitutional, okay? How many years have people's rights been denied going through that legal process for that to happen? And that's if it even happens. And that's where I that's where I have a problem with that. We may win the battle in the end, but in the terms of um, in terms of machine guns, you've got multiple generations that have been denied that right. In the term of bump stocks, you've got a generation that's been denied the right. And who knows how long it's going to take when it comes to pistol braces. Yeah, what's when does, this right, go in, when does this go into effect? When does this go into effect? I'm I'm ignorant. I think the 120 it's, days are up around Memorial Day. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's in effect now. I think they came out with their final ruling yesterday or the day before. Like like they made it official, official, no longer floating their paperwork. Um, and there's a lot of questions surrounding that as well. Um, and I don't have the answers to that, so I'm gonna I'm just kind of like gonna step back. And to, to be honest with you guys, I don't own a pistol brace. I thought it was stupid from the get-go. I've got 13 tax stamps. I've got plenty of SBRs, but I also own about 50 firearms. So if they came and said, I want all of your all of your NFA items right now, I've still got plenty of firearms for myself, my neighbors, and their cousins. I'm good on myself. My primary go-to firearm, and Doc brushed on this earlier, my primary go-to firearm is a 16-inch barrel rifle. It's not even an NFA item. If they go, Bruce, you've got to grab one weapon to go into war with right now. We're not telling you where you're going, how long you're going to be there, where you're going to be. It's not an NFA item I'm grabbing. The longer barrels are more effective. And Brent will contest this. We've trained together. I typically don't take out an NFA item. I typically take out a longer barreled weapon because I appreciate the range and I appreciate the velocity that I get from that. Don't get me wrong. If you want a 300 wind mag with a half inch barrel, by God, you should be able to have one. I support you 100%. But that's not what I'm taking into war. If I'm someone I'm taking into combat if I have to go. So for, for, for me, Yes, I own NFA items. No, I don't own a pistol brace. I thought it was a dumb idea. If the if, if I had something that, that might have a pistol brace on it, I'd rather just SBR it and have a stock on it. And I'm in that weird group that it's not one or the other. It's not, it's not, it's not either I'm not gonna I'm gonna have a pistol brace and nothing else, or I'm gonna be compliant and nothing nothing else. I I can actually do both. That's an interesting thing, Z Man. Uh, it's going to, that's a question that's going to be settled in the courts, but that is one thing the, uh, brace has done, Bruce, that does make it valuable. It's showing the silliness of SBRs and stuff. So it's just a battle that has to get fought. The question is, when are we going to go fight it? I, yeah, that's I'm not hundred percent. I'm not a hundred percent convinced that, uh, this court can be trusted either. 
<laughs> you know, we've had we've had some rulings uh, that have not exactly you know should have been slam dunks with a conservative court, and they they weren't. Uh, not pertaining to guns, but so it's like even if NFA is on the table, I'm not too convinced that there's enough real conservative judges in there that would do the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to just rely on one institution, especially as we saw with institutions in general now recently here. So Hence, that's why I said earlier, two pronged attack. Who's our legislative leader willing to carry this water? Because you got to have one person that champions the cause. You know, and a, and a lot of these courts, they don't they don't care about these these higher courts decisions. They're they're still making decisions on the lower levels that are in complete defiance of the higher level courts decisions. And when you have two courts battling it out like that, that are in defiance of each other, it's really hard to make any kind of headway. Yeah, Jared, what scares everyone? I can speak for everyone here. I'm the voice of all of you. Is that we don't trust the, the, the court's outcome because courts are political on both sides. Anyone can read the Second Amendment. You can have a six-year-old that understands English, and that six-year-old can read the Second Amendment and understand what it's saying. How anybody can deviate from that is beyond belief. They do it for political reasons only. And that's the problem that our, our courts oftentimes are politically motivated. They're ideological. They shouldn't be. They should be reading basic English on a six-year level. But they're not. They're below that. They put their opinion into it. And what's scary, and we see this every day as they go back and forth on, on stocks. We can do this with bump stocks. We had, we had a stream, I don't know, maybe a year ago. And I thought bump stocks were legal. And they go, wait, no, that's been reversed by the courts. They're now illegal. It's bouncing back and forth so much you can't even keep up with it. And the fact that we can't trust our courts is the problem. The courts are who we are depending on to make the right decision here so that blood isn't spilled. And when those courts are politically motivated or ideologically motivated, that's problematic. Yeah, I mean, this that's thats what I'm saying about going on the offense, too, is it, like the notion, maybe just go around the room. What firearm should be illegal? What firearm? I'm, I'm not saying what act. We know what act. Murder is illegal. Rape's illegal. Robbery is illegal. Blah, 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 blah. And the people that commit those are felons and on and on and on. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about humans or acts. What mechanical device called a firearm should be illegal? Oh, I'll, I'll tell you. The one, the, like a car tire that you go to air up, and, you, and when, you, when you go to air it up, it's actually a barrel that shoots you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Like the, the, you know, if you look at that thing out there in the UN where it's got like a revolver with a barrel that comes back at you, I think maybe even I could recognize that should probably be illegal. <laughs> hey, what what about the cock gun in from Dust Till Dawn? One that like flops down? No? I haven't seen that movie, so I don't know what it is. What? Some oh, Hayek? Oh that's a God. Danny Trejo, right? <laughs> Danny Trejo. Sorry guys, oh. I'm a boomer. I don't know these I don't, even, I don't know these young actors. Anyway, yeah, I mean, I, I just don't, I don't get it. I'm like, well, you shouldn't have a fast shooting. You shouldn't have a convenient, you shouldn't have an efficient, accurate, you shouldn't, you, RPG-7, Carl Gustav, I mean, I'm all for that. I love flamethrowers. Um, like, what, what, trench mortars seem pretty cool to me. I bet you. And I could be wrong. I admit I could be wrong. But I bet you not too many convenience stores or taxi cab drivers were ever robbed at point blank with a crew served mortar. Um, <laughs> would be awesome. But uh, it'd be a great story. Uh, but, you know, I'm just like, but what, what firearm should not be? No, that should be totally legal. Just on the coolness factor alone. Um, <laughs> I, 
what what shouldn't be legal? I I there shouldn't we shouldn't have this conversation. We shouldn't we, have this we conversation. Have, we have to remember where all this came from. We have to remember where our founding fathers' mentality was at the time of the American Revolution. And and the the, the ATF does this all the time where they talk about intent. They're quick to talk about intent and illegal, but let's look at intent with our founding fathers. These guys, I don't know if you've ever seen, um, uh, what was the name of that show? It was really good. It was called Adams. It was called Adams. And it's about John Adams. And John Adams was this, uh, was, was one of our founding fathers and he was involved in the revolution. And then he, he ended up becoming president. But I want you guys to check this series out. It was an HBO series. and It was very well done because think about it from a gun owner's perspective, right? These guys said, we're going to, we're going to slap the face of the most quite possibly the most powerful military government in the world. We're going to tell them that we're no longer going to bow down to their king. And we're going to do what we want. We're going to break away. We're going to form our own government and we're going to create our own laws and we're not going to send taxes to them anymore. We're going to do our own thing. These were all British citizens living in the Americas that came, came aboard and said, we're going to do this. They all expected to die. They expected to be hanged by the neck until death and then their family quite possibly in prison for life. That's what they had to look forward to. They put oh, their life experience. on the line. Yeah, because they believed in one thing. They believed that freedom was more important than life. If we today believe that freedom is more important than life, this doesn't even become an issue. But we're not. We're all surrounded by a bunch of safety sallies that believe life is more important than freedom. Moms don't care if their kids are free as long as their kids are safe. Moms will, will do anything to their kids in the name of safety, not even thinking about freedom. Our founding fathers did not have that mentality. Our founding fathers said, we're going to put it all on the line, even though we have a 1% chance of this working out. We're all dead men, but we're okay with that because at least we'll die free. I think it's Massachusetts, but one of the states, give me liberty or give me death. That's they're saying. Think about that. People don't do that today. But if they did, this wouldn't even be an issue. And so many times when these gun control things come up, whatever they may be, bump stocks or freaking pistol braces or magazine capacity or barrel lengths or any of that bullshit, it's all sold on the idea of kids or family safety. And nobody thinks about the freedoms that were given up. New Hampshire, Agreed. live free or die. Thank you, Mr. A. Brent, pull that up again. Can you pull that back up? Because I, I want to respond to that. I mean, it's not a fair, that's, that's a cheap shot. I, I'm not, don't mean to beat the person up, but I think that's a cheap shot. Okay, here's why that's a cheap shot. John Adams and the founding fathers were born essentially as subjects of aristocracy. So this is their reality. And so that's the reality they were shirking. Um, and it is fair to say that they, you know, they're products of that reality. Okay. Um, on the other hand, I can only deal with one at a time. But on the other hand, let's talk about what the founding fathers did. They embraced the ideas of John Locke, which were absolutely radical. I mean, they struck fear into the hearts of aristocracy. The very idea that kings were not born morally superior and closer to God than peasants, Jesus Christ Almighty, what are you going to do? You're going to create a, a nation without, without aristocracy? Do you know what that would inspire? That might inspire, say, a country in Western uh, Europe to um, say, hey, we want to be like America and actually go in and behead their own aristocracy. Hello, France. So to say that the founding fathers were embracing an aristocracy, they were rejecting it. They were rejecting it under the rights of man. Um, they clearly plagiarized the rights of man. And what followed suit from there wasn't just the beheading of the French aristocracy, but frankly, over the next 200 years, all of European aristocracy dies a whimpering death. Today, they ride bicycles. 
Um, I think the founding fathers should be given their due credit. So there's that. Let, let me say this real quick. I want to take, Cypher, I hope you don't mind me taking your comment because you had mentioned, you know, e Elon Musk being the one defending our rights or whatever. Okay, brother, I'm with you, I, Elon Musk. But imagine this. I thought about this today. Imagine that we, we get Elon Musk to go into the BATF when we abolish the BATF and he gets to go around office to office and tell them all that they're fired. Now, how epic would that be on a live stream? <laughs> Hey, and maybe Elon Musk is our current aristocracy, being the richest man in the world. But who else could have gone into Twitter and do what they did? And, you know, yeah, Twitter is a private business, but man, it laid out what they were doing. And what do you know? All those conspiracy theories were right. Funny. I yeah. wish you would have the same for YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't hold a man's I don't hold a man's wealth or woman in that you guys understand against them. If you're successful in this country or this world, you found a niche where people will give you money. And this is what Brent's trying to do, a super chat, by the way, it, it, where people will give you money for some idea that you have. Well, by God, is that not the American way? I mean, come on. What are you guys, racist? You're against African-Americans? Support Elon Musk a little more. <laughs> Wait, was that right for you, Bruce? African American? Wait, what? Elon Musk is from South Africa and he immigrated here. He is technically an African American. Okay, okay. There you go. I thought you were not like saying Brent was, you know, a minority. And I was like, okay. Didn't know if he was gonna wind up being like Filipino or I, I just didn't know. Bruce, Bruce, what's rant number two? Have we heard it yet? That was rant number two, I think. <laughs> I don't think so. I think that was ad hoc. All right, I'll throw one out there. A lot of you guys have mentioned that the BATF is about the money. Guys, it's not about the money. And someone made the comment early on, and, and I'm sure it was tongue-in-cheek, but the BATF wants money so that they can send more to Ukraine. Okay, fair enough, guys. I get it. But listen, the, the if you took all the money that the BATF has incurred since 1935 on tax stamps, you couldn't buy two German Leopard tanks. It really isn't that much money. It's 200 bucks at a pop. The, the BATF isn't even solvent when it comes to the money that they're bringing in from tax stamps. The BATF still needs taxpayer money outside of voluntary donations, i.e. tax stamps, to stay afloat and pay and pay $120,000 to every employee that they've got, plus benefits, plus retirement and pension. Guys, it's it, trust me, it's not about the money. It's about the control. It's, it's about the same thing that John Adams and our family, our founding fathers warned us about 200 freaking years ago. That's what it's about. It's not about the money. If it was about the money, the tax stamp that was $200 in 1935 would not be $200 today, brother. Think about it. It'd be thousands of dollars. I just want to point out that it's funny to me that, you know, what was widely known as the most, one of the most corrupt governments in all of Europe, Ukraine. We have no problem sending some of our best high-speed weapon systems over there with almost no accountability or tracking on where they're going or what they're doing or you know <laughs> where they're ending up. Perfectly fine with that, but we can't trust individual American citizens with a freaking stabilizing brace. Are you kidding me? In 10, 15 years, those same weapons we're giving the Ukraine are going to be used against us somewhere else. Well, you watch, you watch CNN or MSNBC, and they're they're talking about how brave old women and citizens are in Ukraine for taking up AKMs against the evil Russian military that's invading Kiev. And those are the exact same people we would be if they came here, and we're evil for even thinking about wanting those weapons. The hypocrisy. Yeah, the Ukraine, man, they were not pro-2A until this whole thing kicked off. They were round up the guns, got to have licensing, super strict, super pro gun control, right? This thing kicks off and they're like, oh, well, let's do 180 on that. Why is that? <laughs> and that's because they actually were the corrupt. Look, I, I, I actually champion Ukraine and I actually think we should be sending what we're sending. And I, I want to send more. And, and that's not to negate anything you guys have said. 
Uh, I think Jared just said, yeah, in 10 years, we're going to be fighting against those. True, true, true. Not, not negating it. That's truth. Um, but why do I believe that we should do it? Simply because they're an existential fight against a greater evil. Um, and I don't mean that Russian people are evil. I mean the Russian regime is evil. All right, so that's, that's what it comes down to. To me, it's the lesser of two evils, and let's back the one that we need to win, which would be Ukraine. Um, all that said, uh, you know, Brent brings up, this is one of the most, arguably the most corrupt government in all of Europe. Also true. And, and I don't, anybody who sits there and tries to apologize for that or say, oh, it's not true, it's not true, the hell it isn't, Mike just told you. One of the metrics we can use is how much does a government trust its population with its own self-defense in terms of like weaponry and firearms and laws that say, yeah, you can defend yourself, um, you know, if your life is threatened. And the answer is that Ukraine said, the heck with all that, we're the criminals. We don't want you defending yourself against us. We are the criminals. But those criminals were attacked by bigger criminals and more powerful criminals. And, and, and if the, uh, Russia is successful in taking Ukraine, this has, I'm afraid, it has wicked repercussions for all of Europe and, frankly, the rest of the free world. So I'm all for arming the Ukrainians, even though I realize they're corrupt, we don't have good accountability, and Jared is right. Those weapons in 10 years are going to be used against us. Deal with the fire. You know, you put out the fire or you deal with the fight that's right in front of you. We say that in the in the infantry light uh, often. We say fight the fight you have in front of you. Don't think about second, third, fourth, sixth order effects. Those are very real. But right now, you fight the fight you have in front of you. Then you deal with those. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Well, we saw this in Afghanistan, right? We armed the Muhad Adina in the, in the 80s because they were fighting the evil Soviets. And then we end up fighting, uh, I, I, no doubt, no doubt, at some point in history, some American soldier or Marine was killed by a weapon that we had supplied to the Muhadin in the 80s. We know that for a fact. We don't know who that was, but it certainly happened. You can't, you got to be really careful when picking sides on, on these things because you don't know who you're going to be fighting in the future. And, Doc, I, I agree with you. I, I, too, support the arming of Ukraine, but I also don't see – I also see it as being problematic, extremely problematic. If we don't bring them into the fold and make them a, a – a, a, in the end, have them as a, a pro-NATO country that's under Western, under Western law and authority, uh, that could be very problematic for us. And when we go around to countries and we say that, hey, we're here to protect your sovereignty – we want you to make decisions for yourself. Sometimes those countries make decisions that, that don't end up working out for us. I know we've got a little bit off topic here, but I do want to say this to you guys because I've thought about this a lot. We talk about all the money that we send to Ukraine. Well, let's pretend that we didn't send that money to the Ukraine. Do you think that the Biden administration and our current administration will be sending us tax refunds on that money? Nope. What would they be doing with that money? They'd be teaching your sons that they could be girls. They'd be teaching your daughters that they could be boys. They would be taking down the boys and girls bathroom signs. They'd be they'd be spending that money, making our children woke and teaching them that we're all a bunch of boomers that are out of touch and that they should be thinking for themselves. And if, if Johnny wants to wear a dress today, he can wear a dress today. And if Susie wants to stand up and pee in a urinal, she can do yep. that too. All right. It's agreed, better agreed. that if we've got a corrupt government, it's wasting our money over there than spending it over here. Okay, now you are going down a deep rabbit hole. But let me say that I I'm agree sorry. with you. No, no, let me say that I agree with you. And I'll point out what Les was saying. And it, and that is, but I, I want to bring it back to something you said, uh, Bruce. The fact is that the Obama administration gave all sorts of small arms to Syria. That, uh, God, I think uh, he gave all sorts of small arms to, what was it, you know, uh, Libya and and all of these other steps and every administration does Trump did and Obama did and Bush did and Clinton did all the while saying you guys shouldn't have bump stocks or braces look we're buying our own firearms the same firearms that you American government are championing as uh, the weaponry of democracy and republics uh, but we're buying it ourselves and not asking for taxpayer dollars so how about just f off just a minute take the hell step back and I will figure out which firearm and what, you know, fixtures to that firearm work for me. If I want a nuclear grenade launcher, it's the weaponry of democracy. Okay. So leave me the hell alone. So I do agree with that, 
Um, but at the same time, Bruce, here's what bothers me about all the other presidential administrations just lolly lolly. Here's all the weapons I don't want to give to Americans, and I don't even want them to buy for themselves. But you, the rest of the world, can have it, you citizen militias. Um, there was no effort to bring them into the fold. Bruce is absolutely right. What I'm hoping, hoping for in Ukraine is that the rest of Europe and NATO and North America says to Ukraine, hey, man, now that we helped you, how about you stop being the asshole? How about you stop being so corrupt? How about you come into the fold of representative democracies that are republics protecting minorities? How about that now that we've saved your ass? Well, here's one other point to look at it since you say past this prologue, Doc. Nobody did for Poland what we're doing for Ukraine right now. So maybe the British didn't come. The French didn't come, even though they were supposed to. Poland fought on its own. Finland fought on its own. Nobody came to help. You know what? I'm far consent to send them all kinds of weapons before we send the first American boy to go fight there. <laughs> you know, let him fight. We can afford it. We're the arsenal of democracy. You know what? We got plenty of tanks sitting out in the desert. Send, send them a bunch. You know what? We start to get low. We got a factory that can make more. They're like Doritos. <laughs> you know, same thing. We got 4,000 planes sitting out there at desert, out in the desert doing nothing but sit in the desert. Let's start sending them F-16s. You know? Why not? I, I do want to reorient. I think we got down a rabbit hole, guys, with Ukraine. I was just trying to make the point that we're sending – we're entrusting these – you know, corrupt government of Ukraine with all these high tech weapon systems, but yeah, we can't trust our own citizen with pistol prices. That's all. Fair to point. Say. Fair, I totally understood. <laughs> we did go down a rabbit hole, but totally understood, Brant. Let's no, us here. down a rabbit hole? No, that would never happen. that's never happened on a live stream. <laughs> uh, let's see. We're at the two hour thirty minute mark. So, uh, here in about. 15 mics i'm gonna do a round robin and uh close us out so i do want to give a pme real quick so stand by freaking sergeant major brent 0331 pme and uh you know we are a republic all right we are not a democracy we are a republic so you have representatives in the senate and in the congress and uh you need to blow up their message box yes to make them understand that we have multiple people that care about this issue, right? If you've been watching us from the beginning, I made a comment about the 7 and 6 ammo and how the 545 five ended up getting banned because there weren't very many AK-74 owners out there. I, I'm one, <laughs> so I cared about it. But there's just not a plethora like there is AR-15. So it's like when you had the 7 and 6 ammo come up and they uh, know there's not enough people you know, cr you know, know, screaming about it, yeah. They end up banning it, right? And then you have the green tips and a whole bunch of people own AR-15s and made a lot of noise. And guess what? It didn't get banned. So how can you make yourself loud and vocal so that our representatives know that this is an issue you care about? Well, here's one way, right? Congress.gov, go there. If you don't know your representative's uh, website, you go there, all right? You freaking type in your address here. And it's going to let you know who your representatives are, all right? And you guys can see the links have been clicked on by me because I've already done this. I've contacted all three of those guys, okay? So you send them, you go to their websites, and every single one of their websites has that option to write them a message. You write them a message saying, hey, the freaking Biden administration, the AETF, is making this move on uh, pistol braces, and I'm expecting you to intervene and do something about this. Okay, and that's what you do. That is which that is your COA right now. All right, Doc already made the point about we are not at the uh, the bullet box yet. Um, what was your phrase there, Doc? <laughs> We're not at that point yet, right? You need to do this, okay? The the uh, legal, all right? The correct COA right now at mm -hmm. this point in time is to contact your representative and make your voice heard so they know that this is a big issue. And they know that this can affect their re-election efforts. So do your part. Rant over. 
not only on the federal side, people need to do that on, on the state side too. Mm-hmm. That way we don't have other states like Illinois trying to pass these, these unconstitutional laws. Yeah. That's a good point, Jared. We, we kind of take for granted. I live in Texas that, you know, anything that comes up that has guns in it, that Texas typically opposes, but there's a lot of States that teeter, that teeter on that. And, you know, it all begins on the, on the local level and then the state level. And, and, and rarely does, does in any state, does local law trump state law, just like rarely in any state does, does state law trump federal law. So going on the state level to start protecting our rights, and that's where our, our sheriffs are involved and things of that nature. It's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's a great thing. We need to be fighting this battle on multiple fronts, and we need to give absolutely every legal nonviolent um, approach an opportunity to completely play out before we consider anything else. Absolutely. And, and like here in, I'm in central Virginia. Uh, we just recently went to a Republican governor here. Uh, so we're one of those States that kind of teeters back and forth for, for a few years at a time and um, gun control and, and whatnot has been kind of quiet here lately. You don't hear too much on either side here in Virginia right now. Um, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, like I said, it can go either way. Um, but if you're, if you're in one of these States that teeters, you need to make your voice heard so that it continuously starts to go in our direction into the, the constituents, us, the constituents into our rights so we can keep our rights at the state level and, and the federal level. And we have to be careful not to necessarily think of this as Republican versus Democrat because we, we Reagan was a Republican. Reagan banned the new manufacturer of machine guns. Trump was a Republican. Trump banned the bump stock. So we have to call a spade a spade. We have to be careful about that and thinking that, yes, Republicans say they're pro-gun and Democrats say they're anti-gun, but what they say and what they do are sometimes two different things. I've made this argument before. If I were to go out on the street in Texas and say, what do you think about Barack Obama and gun control? With that, well, almost without an exception, people would either say, I support Barack Obama because he was pro-gun control, or I hate Barack Obama because he was pro-gun control. Barack Obama was probably the greatest gun salesman this country has ever seen. He is single-handedly responsible for putting more firearms in American hands than any president we've ever had. And that goes back to the revolution. Absolutely. I was, is, I was one of those victims. I well, played into it, it. As was I. I was buying two, three a month because, you know, he's saying, we're saying, oh, my God, everybody's saying he's going to ban firearms. Well, go buy all you can. And he didn't ban anything. Tell me what he Barack didn't even Obama mention banned. it. Tell me what Barack Obama banned. I can tell you what George Bush banned. I mean, I can tell you what um, uh, Ronald Reagan banned. I can tell you what Donald Trump banned, but I can't tell you what Barack Obama banned. So, 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 just because Bruce, a person has a D in front of their name, and now don't get me wrong, it's not because he was a pro gun guy. It was just because of the way the politics played out. But just because it wasn't going to get him votes. That's right. Just because you have a leader that has a D or an R in front of their name, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are pro or or, or anti-Second Amendment. you got to look a little deeper than that. Bruce, I think we've given a little too much credit to the presidents here. You know, the machine gun ban was buried in a bill. And that same bill was the Volcomer McClure Act that says, if I leave Virginia and I go to Maine, drive through New Jersey, New Jersey can't fuck with me. You know, they buried it in that. I I, I understand doing that. You can blame Reagan maybe for not vetoing it, but you know, that's that's the only thing you can blame him for. Well, I, I can blame him for not reading the bill and being incompetent. And if we're going to put Which that... Which politician little... reads any bill? Look at that last omnis, omnibus spending bill. thing was 7,000 pages. It was published at 1 in the morning. They voted on it first thing in the morning. Nobody reads anything they vote on. They should. Oh, Yeah. That's are we going? To, are we going to elect a president that, that doesn't read the bills he signs? And if the answer is yes, then we deserve exactly what we get. Yeah, and that's one of the things that the speaker fight was about—that they were demanding time to read the bills before they had to vote on them. 
Yeah, look, I, I agree. You're right. You're right, Les. You're right, Les. I give Reagan I, – I, I punch Reagan in the gut every chance I get. All right? I slap, I slap Nancy right in the face, too, because I'm kind of an asshole, okay? But – well, if, got you're, there, if you're the leader of the free world and there are millions of Americans that put him up on a pedestal as being the greatest conservative president in our lifetime, maybe in the last 100 years, I'm going to push right back on that and say he was an anti-gun. He did the most to hurt <laughs> gun-owning Americans than any president in my lifetime. Now, granted, he was tricked into it. And that's, I think that's your point. He was sort of tricked into it. But you know what? If you're going to run for the, for the job of being the leader of the free world, freaking read your bills and freaking be responsible for what your votes, votes and signatures are. That's all, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, who does the buck stop with? I, I just want to stop short of calling Obama like a pro gun guy. I mean, come on, guys. If he had if he had the capability, he would have. And uh, some of the commenters already point out seven and six was banned under his watch. M eight five five would have been banned had it not been stopped. Okay, by the people's voice. And uh, uh fuck, I just had a brain fart. <laughs> What's I gonna say here? Sorry, I, I I've had four beers, and it's. it's um, damn it! Somebody Basically, jumped in. Obama would have banned anything if he had the support for it. Well, that was it. You know, it was low That's hanging right. fruit. You know, I don't think I've always said this. I don't think Barack Obama gave a shit about guns. He said what the party he required didn't, no. of him. Because think during that eight years of presidency, <laughs> besides a few gun things, what didn't he get that he wanted? That guy got everything he freaking wanted while he was president. Except guns, because I don't think he personally gave a shit about it. Well, neither did Reagan. Bruce's whole point. Reagan could have said, "Oh, you duped me." Presidential Powers Act. Nope, I'm I'm striking that down right now. He could have done that the very next morning when he found out he was duped. Did he? No, because Reagan didn't care about guns, and he didn't care about American rights. And at the time, we can't just blame Reagan. We have to blame ourselves. Did we do anything? Did what did Americans do when he banned them? Nothing. You got you literally got machine gun owners today that are going, I don't want the legalization of new manufacturer of machine guns because my thirty thousand dollar M16, <clears throat> which I have invested money in, suddenly becomes worth twelve hundred dollars because my forty thousand dollar MG42 suddenly becomes worth $5,000. These machine, many, not, not me, but many machine gun owners today, because machine guns are so expensive, that's an investment to them. I got a good friend whose wife who married a, uh, a, a doctor in the army and she was retiring, he was retiring. She said, I've got $100,000. Can you invest it for me? He said, sure. And he went to a, a friend of mine who's a machine gun dealer and said, here's $100,000. Whenever you see a good deal on a machine gun come up, you buy it. Now, this is a pro-gun guy. But his life investments, $100,000 of his wife, mo wife's money, went into machine guns, not to lose money, but to grow money. And many machine gun owners today are in the same boat. If we took a vote on removing machine guns from an NFA item and allowing the new manufacturer of machine guns with or without a $200 tax stamp, there are many machine gun owners who would oppose it. So we have to look at ourselves, not just our politicians, for the, the, the world that we create around us. All right. I remember what I was going to say. So, <laughs> sorry, but Obama. All right. The only reason he didn't do more is because we put a we put checks on him, right? We we took back the Congress, we took back the Senate. That's the only way. Okay. I keep seeing these comments. This is a repeated thing. Oh, the election was stolen. This, that, and the other. Guys, don't let Trump's defeatist attitude defeatist. Okay. That's exactly what happened. He's a defeatist. He wants to make an, every single thing that happened. Look at toxic leadership. All right. They always want to make an excuse. It's not them. 
they're not the problem. It's it's this or that. It's not me. All right. Every time something happened with uh, one of Trump's advisors, whether it be his, uh, you know, top general or this and other. At, at, at first, they were the greatest general ever, right? Greatest general the military has ever had. I always hire the best, the finest. Until that person says something ill will of, of Donald Trump. And it's like, oh, the most ridiculous, overrated general or whatever in, in history. <laughs> okay. This guy's a freaking defeatist. He's, he's dragged us down. All right. We need to move past him. All right. Um so I keep seeing these uh, election rig. Quit saying that. We wouldn't have taken back the freaking Congress if if, it, if these elections were rigged, okay? Um, and if we keep having these defeat, the people that are making these defeatist attitude uh, statements, they're not voting. And it's costing us elections, all right? I mean, come on. Give me a freaking break, guys. We, we wouldn't have the Congress right now if, if it was like that, all right? So quit costing us elections. And if we, if we weren't losing these elections, we wouldn't be having these problems right now. We wouldn't have to have these live streams. So co contact your congressman. Freaking vote. It's simple. And we win. All right? Hell, we're only losing elections by, you know, a few thousand votes. I mean, it's ridiculous. Then we can have real live streams on sex robots. Well, we're having those anyway, so <laughs> we all know that's why you're here. Dude. Right up. <laughs> when when are we gonna do this? This is like the hottest <laughs> topic. You've got to give the audience what they want, Brent. Doc, uh, we already had. Quit acting like we haven't done it. We had. I, 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 I can assure you guys, me and Doc are, are balls deep in testing on this sex robot thing. We've got yeah. some some news <laughs> right around the corner. Just just stay tuned. It's true. Rich, you got a super chat there from our, our buddy Cypher. Um, he says, I voted to go through the motion, but make no mistake to have secured election 2,000 years ago. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm not going to argue that. Ron DeSantis, guys, Florida. Sweep them. Sweep yep. them. Yep. Absolutely sweep them in, in cities that were Democrat sweet cities. There's your recipe for victory. All right. Here, quit, here's quit my this. question. And I'm a DeSantis fan, probably more than anybody right now. But uh, to bring it kind of back into the fold, does anybody know where DeSantis is on gun control? Yeah, you know, that's a great question because in Florida, uh, binary triggers are banned. Yep. And I heard a while back that he wouldn't do or he was going to cancel an event because they were going to allow or not allow um, people to carry at the event. They weren't going to allow people to carry at the event. And he was going to cancel if um, I'm not I'm not saying it right. If the people were allowed to carry, he was going to can cancel the event. Yep. See, that reminds me a lot of like the NRA position, right? Where you've got the, the you still got the picture of Charleston Heston with the freaking flintlock in his hands and he's going from my cold dead hands. And you try going to an NRA event today and they're telling you to come unarmed. So it's like, bro, do you live the life or are you just blowing smoke? And if that's the truth on DeSantis, it's sort of the same thing. It's like, it's like rules for thee, but not for me, right? He's saying, I want everybody to be able to have guns. I'm a pro-Second Amendment guy. Oh, but not at, not when I'm speaking. I want everybody unarmed running through a metal detector. All I'm I mean, saying is, look, we have to be careful with this Republican-Democrat thing. I like DeSantis, right? But put your money where your mouth is. Who was yeah, it? I it was, uh, go it for was anybody uh, If you're not pro-gun, you're, you're not pro-American, you're not pro-human rights. It's just flat out you're not. You can't be pro-human rights and then claim, oh, but I don't believe people should be able to defend their lives. Okay, then you're not pro-human right. You're anti-human rights. I mean, you might be smorgasbord and pick a few, but you're not pro-human rights. I won't vote for someone who's not pro-human rights. And that means nuclear armament for everyone. Yeah, I mean the thing about yeah, the thing about human rights is that the whole idea um, of that was that it was for the entire it wasn't for the country, it was for the world. 
we deal with this in a negative context when we talk about immigration. When we're like people in other countries should have the same rights as us, therefore they come here just because they're not a citizen of this country, they should be privy to all the rights that this country has. Well, in that same breath then, shouldn't they be privy to the same Second Amendment rights that all Americans have? But we're not out there spreading that around the world, are we? And the question is, then why not if that's the case? You can sell me on the idea that American rights, constitutional rights, are God-given rights. And we know God doesn't discriminate against Americans. It's not just Americans that are getting into heaven. Russians, Vietnamese, Chinese, Israelis, whoever you are, Africa, whatever continent country you're from, if you believe in God, you should be able to get into heaven. We all agree on that, regardless of color, creed, historical background, gender, whatever, right? Well, if that's the case, why aren't we out there supporting Second Amendment rights for all the countries around the world? We aren't doing that. So does our government as a whole really believe in, in, in rights for all people or not? I have to question that because by their action, it doesn't look like they do. Well, you bring up a good question. Does does heaven have, have weapons? Because my heaven does. It's called Valhalla. So does your heaven have weapons? All I'm going to say, guys, is there's only two governors that come to mind that were pro-liberty during the whole COVID thing when it first was happening, and that's DeSantis yeah. and Noam. Then and, he better uh, be pro gun because if he isn't, yeah. he's not well, pro-liberty. I mean, I haven't seen – I haven't dived too much into it. All I know is that uh, he was a naval officer, and when everybody else, including Trump, was saying two weeks to stop the spread to turn into two years – yeah. He was like, no, we're not doing any of that. We're going to stay open. No, he had some really impressive things to say. I've, I've been impressed in general. I, I am, and I hope he does well. But I also hope he's pro-human rights. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's, what, 1990s Democrat, right? It, you know, talking about where his position is, but at least he's a reasonable guy, you know, in this mm-hmm. <laughs> insane world right you at least got a reasonable guy even though he's like a throwback 90s democrat okay whatever it's better than insanity I, I suppose you know i mean when you look at the field like who else right i'll go with yeah. the same guy whatever you know yeah. i get it um but oh i did want to say something to cypher's uh comment that popped up yeah dude um you don't own anything like you don't own you know your sovereignty you don't have human rights, you don't have nothing unless you're willing to throw down like, you know, yeah, okay, I'm going to give my speech here. I'm going to give my words here. I'm going to take legal action here, but I'm going to put myself, my body, my state, or not my state, my uh, my purse, everything on the line if I care about something, right? And and what are we saying here, you know? Hey, guys, let's, let's care about this and prove that we care about it by getting involved, taking action, doesn't have to be at the cartridge box yet right you know you got all these other steps uh Mm -hmm. before that but at the end of the day you know man you got to put your body on the line if it's something you believe in and uh that 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 includes your holdings all right guys hey we're at the one hour 53 minute mark and i'm completely out of beer doc i know you're literally sitting at your bar there um but uh i'm bingo so <laughs> we're gonna go around the horde and we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up, guys. Uh, every single person on this chat tonight has their own respective YouTube channel. So not only do I want you to address your closing comments, and I also want you guys to talk about your respective YouTube channel and uh, what you got coming down the pipe, including you, Bruce, with your gray man video. So let's go around. The, <laughs> let's go around the horde. Start with Les. You got it, buddy. All right, everybody. Well, the lesson tonight is go ahead, write your elected representatives, let them know how you feel, and do that even if you think your guy is pro 2A. Let him know he's got to step up. The other thing, go buy a gun. The more we have, the harder it is for them to take away. As far as my channel goes, tune in for this coming Friday. I've got the FTX portion of the Alpha Company One Shepherd semester from this fall, and there's some really good firefight scenes in there. I think y'all are going to enjoy that. Also, I got a slew of uh, gear test videos coming, uh, so stay tuned. Tune in every week. 
All right. So first, I want to address uh, uh, a super chat that Cipher threw out. Another one, guys. He's got deep pockets. All right. So you guys, listen. If you need a loan, Cipher's your guy. But I'm gonna tell you. He, he mentioned um, uh, basically that that uh, I'm gonna paraphrase, but it's kind of a bad idea to involve religion or Christianity within a democracy or republic that we have today. Cipher, that may be true through your eyes today. But remember, when this country was founded, it was probably 98% Christian. And at that time, Christians in this country decided that if you want to be of another religion or no religion at all, you have the right to live. We won't tie you to a cross and set you on fire or put you in a chair and dunk you in the water or all the other things that were going on in this hateful world that we live in or in, in other countries that in this country, we will allow you to survive. And if you want to be of a religion or no religion other than Christianity, we won't torture you and kill you for it. That's what the Christians in this country decided at the founding of this country. And we have to see things through that lens when we look at God-given rights and America and the Constitution. So whether you're a Christian or not, that's okay. That's okay. But remember that it was written through that lens and look at it through that lens and re re realize that this was one of the first countries in the history of the world that would not attack you because you deviated from the religious norm at the time. So my channel, Brent's always giving me a hard time about uh, my gray man video. Guys, we've been working for 10 years now on this video where I, I'm gonna release a video showing you guys basically how to blend in with the populace, but at the same time being combat effective. And it's probably more relevant now than it's ever been. But every month that goes by, every year that goes by, I have new ideas, more that I want to add to it. To be honest with you, I haven't gotten off my ass and made it happen. It's in my head, and it's awesome, but I haven't released it yet. And before that, I have simpler videos that I'm going to do. One of the things that I want to do is I want to release some uh, very simple concealed carry videos based around concealed carry for those of you that, that are first timers. And this is what I've always been about. If you notice my channel is not even monetized and I don't want it to be monetized because I'm not about money. I'm about giving free information to you guys that I've learned over a lifetime. I've been carrying for over 20 years now, every single day of my life, every day that I haven't carried, I could count on these two hands in 20 years. So I have a lot of information I can give you guys if you're first time concealed carry, maybe you're on the fence or whatever. And I'm going to start releasing some very simple videos on those starting very soon about what type of equipment, mindset, what do you need? Uh, I'm going to start, start dispelling some myths, particularly that Americans have when it comes to concealed carry versus not concealed carry, open carry, etc. So that's what's upcoming on the channel. You guys can subscribe to me on YouTube. Bruce at Camp Armament, you'll find me. And um, I haven't released anything lately. I'm always slow to come to the to, to come to the table on these videos. And Brent is always quick to call me out on it because he's releasing one or two videos a day. I'm, I just don't have that pace. But um, you guys uh, subscribe to my channel, and I'll have more good stuff coming. Hey, when you guys see video of me from ten years ago, and I'm like thirty pounds lighter, just pretend that that's current video. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll close with this um these thoughts and that is first that uh, gatekeepers gatekeepers are the people in your life that say no and they're often associated with low-paying jobs by the way but not always sometimes very high level paying jobs uh believe that they aren't hired or employed or their whole entire existence is to tell people no hear me out what about this like teachers will say no you didn't take the test the way i wanted you to take the test so i'm not going to pass you no uh priests will say no you didn't pay as much money as i wanted you so you're not getting into heaven uh police will say no you didn't buy the license that i wanted you to so now for selling cigarettes on the street i'm going to choke you to death and the atf will say no uh I don't want you to have that firearm um, and I'm not going to, you know, uh, it, so therefore I'm going to burn you to death and all your family and friends in a church. 
These are gatekeepers and saying no is easy. It doesn't require any risk. The bold, brave thing is to imagine a world where gatekeepers put down their gatekeeping and they find a way to say yes. Teachers, instead of saying no to their students, say, yes, let me help you learn. Priests say, yes, let me help you find comfort. Police say, you know what? You don't have the right license. Come with me to City Hall and I'll, I'll get you the right license. And the ATF says, well, yeah, you know what? As a matter of fact, you can certainly have that firearm. Let me show you how. We need to change the thinking of gatekeepers. And you say, oh, but it'll never happen. Let me remind you that in America, for every 100 people, there are 110 firearms. In America, for every 100 people, there are 110 firearms. The next country is something like Somalia. It's a war-torn country, and I think it has 60. It has half as many firearms for every 100 people. There are enough firearms in America that we should be this enormous community and an enormous con constituency where we can help our government understand that it's in their benefit to say yes. If you don't want to do that, if you don't want to participate, then I will paraphrase, I'll butcher it in doing so, but I'll paraphrase a poem I heard many, many years ago. I don't even remember who it is, but some of you will recognize it. And it goes like this. It says, first they came for the political rabble rousers, and I said nothing because I'm not a political rabble rousers, and so they threw them on the death train. Next they came for the Jews, and I said nothing because I'm not a Jew, and so they put them on the death train. Then they came for the gays, but I'm not a gay. So I said nothing, and they put them on the death train. Then they took for, came for the handicap, and I said nothing because I'm not handicapped. So they put the handicapped people on the death train. Then they came for the cowards, and there was no one left to speak up for us cowards because they had all been put on the death train. The choice is yours. What's coming up for your channel, Doc? Um. I'm going to argue about tanks. I'm going to actually argue a strategic view of tanks and why we probably need to rethink um, armor on the battlefield. That's interesting because I saw something about uh, some Ukrainian general uh, essentially demanding leopard tanks because they were so out of class. So look forward to that. All right, moving on. Audio, brother. You're muted. I just wanted to highlight uh, this channel, Triple F Shooting. He recently did a, uh, well, he's a client of mine. He recently purchased an upper from me, and um, he released this review video. And, uh, you know, I just thought it, he did a great job. He actually watched some of his other videos. Looks like uh, he got a pretty good channel uh, starting up here. And uh, I just wanted to encourage you guys to, check out this uh, review video obviously but also check out his channel too uh he's a pretty great guy so um that's all that's all i got anything coming down the pipe for yours i don't know i mean i'm working on some uh new weapon designs i got a simplified ar-15 design i think i teased that a little bit here on instagram and uh, on your channel as well and i may have some content coming out with that um it's just you know I've been I've been plugging away on this uh, on this weapon and um, you know I just uh, I've been really dedicating a lot of a lot of time on that. Um, once that's ready, I'm I'm sure I'm gonna have some uh, some video footage. However, I can shoot it. I might have a uh, <laughs> a toy model <laughs> showing you guys how it works just uh, because of YouTube's policies. But uh, yeah, that's what I got. Awesome. Thanks, brother. My turn. All right. Brent, I really appreciate you um, letting me come on here tonight. It was a, a real honor. Um, I'm a little camera shy. I'm not a big YouTuber like you guys are. Uh, so it's I feel a little uncomfortable um, sitting in front of a camera like this. So hopefully I did okay for you guys. Um, but my biggest thought on for tonight was what are you going to do when the ATF shows up at your door with a warrant? Um, I mean, you're going to have to really, really reach deep down inside and make some split second decisions for you and your family and your, and your dog. Um, so 
not sure where where the whole pistol brace thing is going to go. I'm hoping that it'll be overturned, and then things will momentum will start to build for the for the two A community out there. Um, uh, as far as my YouTube channel, um, I think I have thirteen, maybe fourteen videos on it. Um, it's very small. They're kind of random. There's a couple uh, shooting videos on there from some classes that we put on. Um, there's more coming. Um, the other ones are just random chan or uh, random videos that I put on. Um, just trying to play around and get used to YouTube. Um, I don't have a computer um, to do video editing or editing or anything, so everything I'm doing is on my phone. Um, that's that's soon going to change. Uh, my channel. Uh, YouTube channel is two alpha solutions. The number two alpha solutions. Um, Brent, I think you're one of my, my subscribers and probably 39 of the others are friends and, and clients and from my everyday work. Um, but there's going to be more coming um, as soon as I can figure out how to, how to do this YouTube thing and maybe not be so camera shy and, and learn how to talk on camera a little bit. So I'll leave you with that. And thank you for having me on Brent. Really appreciate it. Oh, Jared, I appreciate you guys you coming on, man, and uh, all my other guests as well tonight. Uh, again, for those of you that don't know, Jared is uh, the guy I competed against in the uh, Grunt Proof Sear Challenge, which debuts the 5th of February, guys. So two weeks. It's going to be awesome. All right? It's going to be a, a sweet season. Uh, Jared with Grunt Proof really – put it all on the line and, and it's going to be just fantastic. So man, what a great conversation tonight, guys. I, I appreciate everybody that tuned in tonight, especially those that, that did the uh, super chat. If you don't realize this live streaming service is, uh, is uh, utilized with the uh, restream and restream. You have to pay for membership. All right. It cost me like a hundred bucks. So uh, yeah, <laughs> those super chats definitely go towards uh, helping pay for that. So Again, thanks for uh, all the people that uh, signed on tonight and did those super chats. And then, again, thanks to all the people that uh, came on tonight and participating in the interaction. It's been fantastic. And uh, what does the future hold? I don't know. I think you guys uh, you know, need to do your part, though. Like I spoke already, this is a, a republic. All right, so reach out to your representatives. Go to this website. If you don't know your representative's uh, you know, name or website, you can go to congress.org. Just type in your address, and uh, you'll be able to pull that up and uh, figure out exactly who you need to contact in terms of uh, uh, you know, sending them a, a message, okay? Because it really is that simple, guys. If, if they don't realize that, you know, they are, uh, that there's a lot of people that are concerned about this, they're not going to do jack shit. So you need to make your voice heard and you need to contact them. And uh, that's all that we can really do at this point. Okay. So while we're in this grace period, waiting period and all this other crap, make sure your voice is heard, contact your representative and, uh, you know, express your displeasure with the ATF current ruling on this. Okay. So um, that's all I got for tonight, guys. Uh, what do I have down, come down a pipe with the channel? Well, I've been trying to post something every single day. So, you know, be on the lookout for short videos, uh, community tab stuff. And I uh, also got uh, Doc Larson and I, we uh, headed off against each other at a Winter Forge event. Fantastic event. The best Winter Forge I've been to in three years. And uh, just an amazing event across some great footage, guys. So I'm going to be putting that together, and that will be coming down the pipe as well. So outside of that, you can look forward to uh, several live streams. And uh, I'm going to be doing another live stream with my uh, good buddy, Sergeant Major Archibald who was my company first start during the 2003 Iraq invasion. We are going to go through a timeline because he kept an extensive journal during that uh, 2003 Iraq invasion, and uh, we're going to go through that timeline that he put together. So uh, that may be happening tomorrow. I may record that with him via the Restream app, uh, but I won't do that live. I'll, I'll do that as a recording, and then I'll post that video later on. So I'm also going to do something with uh, – I want to – you know, go through my career as a, uh, a Marine infantryman. I wanted to do a live stream solo and uh, kind of express, you know, what it takes to be a young man going into the Marine Corps and be successful in the infantry. Uh, so I will be doing that solo live stream here uh, very shortly. So maybe tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, that's all I got, got coming down the pipe, guys. Uh, keep fighting the good fight, Semper Fidelis. And if you guys got anything else – for me, be sure to post a comment, and I'll do my best to get to you.
All right. Thanks again to all my guests and uh, people that tuned in tonight. Have a good night, fellas.